Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands. I'm Pete, and today we're going to do part two of Scooter's 2001 Polaris XC700, or as one of the has commented, the Extra Content 700. Nice one. I like that. Let's get going. And like I was saying, this is episode number two of our buddy Scooter's XC700. Now, it's been sitting in the barn for quite a few years. If you didn't check out the first video, you may you'll maybe want to check that out first before we watch this one. Uh, that one, we just got the engine up and running and everything. But uh, now, we got to go after the track and skid. We uh, maybe should have looked at that first because we weren't really too concerned with whatever was going on there. We just wanted to get the engine up and going. But... Uh, yeah we're there's some issues going on here like we showed in the last video there the uh the track or something happened in the suspension it's all collapsed and seized uh solid like that thing squatted right down and the studs carve through the tunnel the heat exchangers the shock doesn't move everything seized so like there are major issues we got to pull this all apart and uh, <laughs> see what the heck's going on <laughs> maybe instead of him bringing it to a mechanic he should have brought it to a proctologist because this thing's got a lot of issues with the arson so we'll uh, get her set up we'll pull the uh, pull the exhaust off we'll uh, probably take the secondary off we'll uh, just so we can get a better shot of uh, pulling the uh, speedo gear drive and all that stuff off get the chain case apart we'll lift her up get the seat off pull the skid out Get this thing stripped right down, get the cherry picker set up, get her hanging, and uh, yeah, let's uh, see how bad this is going to be. All right, well, first things first, set the uh, parking brake so the secondary will stay locked in. Grab my Milwaukee 3 8 get her on there, crack her loose. Ooh, yeah, keep them together, all those washers. Then the old, whole secondary should just slide off of there. Give her some wiggling. Come on, you. There we go. Pull that out. Now, with the secondary out of the way, we'll just leave that collar on the back side for the spacing for the secondary. But we can access the speedo drive now. You can leave the cable on if you want and just undo the flange, pull it off, or take this off. I'm going to take it off probably just to check the speedo uh, cable, all that stuff. This upper jack shaft has a uh, zerk fitting or grease fitting, whatever you want to call them. Be a good time to give that a servicing. I tell you, these hose clamp pliers come in handy for everything. There we go. Well, cable's still intact. That's a good thing. And same thing. These are all just half inch as well, so... Oh, nice one. And the little speedo drive thing. Not broken. That's a good thing. Exhaust is out of the way. We can access the uh, cover on the chain case here. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, found your old needle nose pliers there, Scooter. Now, there is a drain bolt way at the bottom here. Yeah, I can access it through the belly pan, but uh, I believe at one point it may have been an Allen key. I don't know. Somebody's been in there and it's all rounded, all the crap, so. Can't uh, really undo it, so we're just gonna pull the cover off and make a bit of a mess. So we'll just throw a drain pan underneath her, unbolt the cover, and uh, yeah, see what it looks like inside. So being that it's a Polaris, these are just uh, three eighths. So I got uh, the one down in the corner, there's a little bit of a bugger to get at, so we'll just uh, use the wobble. Like putting a little bit of electrical tape on the wobble to keep it from just flopping around once these things get worn out they're a pain in the butt put the tape on there holds her a little bit stiff where you want her all right 
right, they're all out. Now we just uh, pop this sucker off. Not too bad. Bit of crap in there. Ooh, chain. Well, yeah, there's a little bit of play in there on the tensioner. Pretty simple though, just the chain, two <laughs> sprockets, and a tensioner. Oh yeah, I'd say. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that, just slide that off of there. So obviously she was out of adjustment a little bit, but uh, we'll put that back on there. Alrighty. Looks like half inch again for the bottom one. And probably, well, we don't really have to undo that one, but uh, we'll just pull the uh, top cotter pin out of here. We'll strip the gears and chain out of here. Inspect it. Same thing, brake is still on, so it should lock everything in place. So we can undo all this. That's a 15, 16 nut on there. And you just keep note. Washer is on the outside of that guy. I usually just lay everything down in the tray, how it came off. <laughs> because this is so already out of adjustment and loose, we'll just pull the tensioner off. And then, should be able to pull the gears off with the chain. There you go. There. It's your gears and chain. Just lay it all out in the case, opposite to how it uh, came off, and you can keep track of her all. Now we can uh, lift the back of the sled up and we'll drop the uh, skid and all that jazz. Okay, got her hoisted up a little bit with the cherry picker there. So, to uh, loosen the track, we gotta undo these back uh, bolts for the back axle and then uh, loosen off the adjusters. Hopefully you get some slack. This thing is guitar string tight. So normally this track is junk. I just cut it off anyway, but I mean I figured I'd show the process of uh, taking the track out without cutting it, but just in case, right? So if we, let's go after those guys, go after the adjusters, hopefully this stuff all undoes and it's not seized. <laughs> not looking good. The adjusters are 5 8 These are 9 16 These adjusters are 5 8 and they are super tight. Oh, son of a... Problem is, is these are steel bolts threaded into an aluminum block that's been sitting for God knows how long. And, uh, aluminum and steel, they don't get along. Till it hit her with the Milwaukee. That's what I'm talking about. Drop it up with the pole wheel. Nice one! See if the other side does the same. Oh, see if this adjuster will move. Oh, gotta like that. Oh, yeah, baby. That bolt wouldn't undo, but I mean, we can live with that at least now. The track should be loose. All right, set her back down low to the ground so we could try and undo all these and not have the skid drop right out and land on top of us. But these, uh, we only gotta go after, there's four bolts that uh, hold the skid in. One here, one up at the front, same thing on the other side. These back ones here go into a steel bushing. Now it does have flat slides on, or sides on it to put a wrench on it, but I have no idea what size it is and it's tight access. You need a really thin wrench to get up in there. So we're just gonna go with the good old steel holes, vice grips. Let's see if we can't crack this sucker loose. <clears throat> oh, she tight. But she coming. Just like so, take it a move. 
Then that front one, we'll see if we can get that out with the middle wacky. No problemo. Let's go to the other side. Let's go after the front one first. This one's out. So find the bushing back here. Just go by feel. Clamp it onto something. If it <laughs> comes out, you clamp the right thing. I think it's just flopping around. around in there. That might be part of the reason why the suspension's all buggy. Now we should be able to lift it up and uh, get that right out of there. Finger up with the cherry picker. Why is that still stuck in there? over top of the wheels and then get the back wheels in by yourself it's a bit of a pain but what do you just like so all right now that we got the uh skid out the tracks are saying we can come back over here just pop that uh, three uh, bolt flange off the back side of the bearing there. And then we'll go underneath. We should be able to pull that drive shaft right in. All right, so with that flange out of the way, all we really got to do is pull this drive shaft out of the uh, chain case side. Just got to lift the track up so it'll pass. Come on, you. Like that. And out goes the shaft. Scooter's uh, drive shaft looks in good shape. You know, the drive cogs are all good. Uh, the drive bearing, it is uh, pretty chunky. It's hard to spin, so definitely going to have to put a new one of those. Should always put a new one of those on anyway, anytime you're pulling the uh, track out and swapping all that stuff. Now, is skid i mean she's in a world of hurt here but these bushings here or brackets they're supposed to be splined and keyed to that suspension and they are waller road like you can spin them around and around that i do believe is the major cause of <laughs> what happened under here because if we get looking up yeah worn right through the heat exchangers and the tunnel. So we're gonna have to pull that seat off. Gonna have to pull the gas tank off. We gotta change those heat exchangers and uh, patch up that tunnel. Yeah, so just undid those two 7 16 bolts from the bottom. There was no nuts or nothing from the top side of the hole. They just came out and then uh, pull back on her and uh, up she, oh, what's all this stuff? Oh, they used the tunnel as the bottom of your Chubby hole, so all this stuff is just, I don't know, we'll just set her all up there. We'll do his electrical here. Come on. Oh. Oh, man. There we go. Okay, seat removed. <laughs> That's how Scooter was going so fast. He was cheating. He's got some weight reduction going here, lightening up the machine. <laughs> Now you can see the handiwork of those studs right through. And there's a seam in the tunnel there. And <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, might be structurally compromised now. We're going to have to patch that up. I'm going to have to take the uh, 
gas tank off too because those heat exchangers run all the way from the back up underneath that so yeah i'll have to uh, strip her down a bit further just a couple more 716 so i get the tank off just got to pull this other shroud off and i mean it just kind of clipped in the bottom there's a little torx bolt that was holding it to the main hoop underneath but i mean scooter somebody's put like there's a little tiny robertson little square drive <laughs> screw in there and i don't even own a robertson screwdriver that small like it's smaller than a red that's the only one i got so good old handy dandy vice grips to the rescue again in order to get this cover out of the way I had to pull the uh, handlebar cover off and i mean it's pretty simple it just has these side strips there they just uh slip right off and then you can peel her up and, uh, i left the pull cord attached i just swung her off to the side the thing i struggled with and i don't know if it's just me but this uh choke plunger thing here <laughs> you undo it and it's like well how the heck do you get it off out of here well i didn't realize it's got a little straight section cut out of there so once you spin her off <laughs> you can put this to the full choke position and then you find it wiggles it out <laughs> sneaky buggers like that game perfection you used to play when i was a kid you just <laughs> round peg in a square hole right well it looks like we just walked into the rippers because that girl there is pretty bare now gas tanks out of the way so we can see where those heat exchanger uh, come out through the tunnel we're gonna have to get the drill going drill all these uh, rivets out so we can get that out and then I'll find a decent piece of aluminum I got kicking around. I'll uh, just patch that. I know I could cut that out and weld, TIG weld a panel in, but I mean, hey, not everybody's got a TIG welder, so anybody can go to the hardware store and buy some rivets, so, you know, and find a piece of scrap. So we'll do it that way. Like, who knows how long he was riding it like that for. So, I mean, anything patched on there is better than that. Well, we need a uh, laundry list of stuff for this thing, so I've got a bit of stuff out in the yard. I'm a bit of a collector, hoarder, scrappy, whatever you want to call it, but we got a lot of snow. I'm not sure if I'll be able to find what I need, but I'm pretty sure I've got a spare skid out there anyway, so we'll go take a peek. Oh, hey, JP's cross cart buried in the snow. Another customer's snowmobile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my uh, dirt bike. Thanks, nice one. Anybody need a Hayabusa? There's a four wheeler under there somewhere. Yeah, everything's buried in snow here. There's, there's three, <laughs> believe it or not, there's three snowmobiles over there. But uh, I think back in this corner. Is that it there? <sighs> nope, that's the wrong. Ah, dang it. No, oh, that's an old Yamaha skid. Uh, probably out of a phaser or an enticer or something like that. Oh, wait a minute. That yellow bit, that kind of looks familiar. <laughs> All that crap sitting on top of my old Terrajet. That's got a phaser motor in there, by the way. Oh, Four-wheeler axle hub, nice. Okay, well... She's not complete, but those fellas right there, that's what we need. So, yeah, we'll drag this in and uh, see if we can salvage any parts off of this. <laughs> Old LT grill looks like it got run over by the truck there. Poor fella. Maybe we'll drag that one out one day. All right, it's in the shop. We'll let it thaw out a little bit, but... Uh, We'll get these guys off, that'll be a good score, and I mean, even if that shaft is worn out as well as the keys, then, you know, we should be able to salvage the shaft out of this fella, and, I mean, hey, 
Those sliders aren't even too bad, so... Score! This thing just keeps on giving. We're saving money. Well, it looks like lucked out. I've got the pieces, I think, to fix the uh, upper suspension part anyway, those keys. But uh, I don't have a track, so uh, I think we should go up, check out uh, the fellas at uh, Peterborough Cycle Salvage there at Cat Shack. And uh, see if they got a used track. Hopefully maybe find one with some studs in it so we can still have some traction. They might have a uh, gas cap, fuel gauge, you know, maybe some wheels and bearings for the uh, skid. Maybe see if they got a used shock or two, you know. Hey, they got lots of stuff up there, so let's go check that out. So we made her down the highway to uh, Peterborough Cycle Salvage, a.k.a. the Cat Shack. And uh, this is kind of a unique spot. If you're looking for something new or shiny, they got that stuff inside. If you want something old, so something for your beater they got the parts outside so let's go check her out look at all those relics up on top of there this is gonna be good all right i ain't never been down here but this here is the basement of peterborough cycle salvage aka cat Shack. and i mean they have got stuff man this is winnie the pooh would love this place because this is the honey hole man look at all the clutches they got motors bits and pieces a wall of carburetors like who doesn't need a wall of carburetors huh. this place definitely isn't on a diet because oh, look at all the carbs in here <laughs> look at that 1000 we should be putting that in that uh, zrt instead of rebuilding the 600 like there's an 1100 complete motor i do believe all kinds of clutches for Pretty much every make and model, you know. Look at that oldie right there. That sucker looks brand spanking new. And then you step outside and they got some previously owned, you know, fixer uppers, part sleds. But as far as the eye can see, you've got stuff. <laughs> Gotta like stuff. Old, old motorcycles, old sled carcasses. I bet you a fella could come in here, grab one of these old carcasses, find every single part you need, like, <laughs> and build a complete sled right in this yard. More clutches and everything all stacked outside, and I'm sure they keep the good stuff downstairs nice and dry, but, uh, I mean, yeah, you need a fender for your own motorcycle or a gas tank, come on now. They got exhaust pipes, four-wheelers. <laughs> it feels like walking in the 80 skid row over here but yeah we should be able to find all kinds of wheels no problem and i mean they also they're busy do working on customer stuff i mean they uh, they got no shortage of work over here but yeah check her out man and i mean as you can tell they are lovers of the vintage stuff look at that sweetie this place is full of goodies and we got a score. That track there, we're gonna take that home. Scooter is gonna have some traction. All right, so our buddy Darren found us some heat exchangers for this thing there a little while ago and you can see how worn out. That's the original ones, divoted right in and they're supposed to be arched right there. So yeah, that's how far that skid dropped. So between Darren getting us those heat exchangers got a few bits uh, we can pull off of that skid and uh, Shout out. Thanks to the guys from uh, cycle salvage cat shack there. We got that beauty track to go back on her. So uh, yeah, all that's left is to uh, Pitter patter get at her. Let's uh, rebuild all this stuff and uh, get it all back in the sled That's like a war zone over here. I got crap laying all over the place, but uh, Rebuilding that skid so far everything's working out pretty good, uh, but I can't use the sliders that were on there They were uh, no good and the donor ones on there. No good because they are Brittle as brittle can be. I mean, yeah, that's no good. I don't need one of them breaking and shooting out Binding up in the track. So yeah, go back to the cat track and pick up two new Ian's gonna go out and pick me up the sliders for that. So in the meantime, I found this piece of uh, aluminum uh, scrap. It was a piece of channel. I just cut the ends off and then I'll uh, drill that all out, get it riveted in, and uh, I'll be using these rivets here. A buddy of ours, uh, Dave, years ago, brought me a big old bucket of these home from work. These are the good ones. It's got, when it pulls the anvil in, it's got those grooves. It stacks it three times. Crimps are nice and tight. She won't let go and go loose on you. These other ones there, those 
Those are your regular hardware store crappy tire ones, just a smooth thing. When that pulls the anvil down through, like it just mushrooms the end. I'll show you what I mean. These ones here are the good ones. Oh, that sucker just shot right across the room. Hold on. See if I can put it in a piece of scrap. <laughs> I'll show you so it doesn't fly across the room. Just like that, three little crimps. Looks just like the Michelin Man. These smooth ones, when you rivet them, it just pulls that anvil down through. Oh. Yeah, so I mean like that one there pulls nice and tight. Looks like the Michelin Man. That's a good tight crimp. That ain't going anywhere. That one just mushroomed it down. It didn't even really, <laughs> doesn't look like it crimped anything. Just, you know, more resembles an uncircumcised uh, circus animal. I don't know. I would definitely recommend those guys. All right, well, I think we're kind of at the point now where we can just clip to the time lapse of sticking this sucker back together. So uh, if you ain't on the edge of your seat, you might want to scooch forward because this is about to get riveting. Ah, 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 ah.
stretch now. Uh, track looks good. All those studs in there. This thing should hook up pretty good. And as you can see, we got tons of room above the track. Won't get anywhere near those heat exchangers now. So all we really got to do is just adjust the track. You know, hit her with some fluids. All I do with the track, you don't want her too tight because when the, you put the weight on it, like that whole skid shifts back and tightens up the track, so you want her to hang a little bit. All I do might be the right way, might not be, but my 7 8 wrench, that's about an inch and a quarter there, so all I do is just drop her in. If she's too loose in there, we tighten her up a bit. Check it again, a little bit of resistance. She's not hanging too bad. And we'll do the same on the other side. And then you just want to run it. Make sure your distance from your track clips to the sliders are even from this side to the other side. Once you get her all in, she's looking good. Lock her down. Ready to go. That thing cleans up pretty nice. She's all done. It wasn't really <laughs> that bad. I mean, yeah, it was a bit of a hassle rebuilding that skid. And, you know, the hole in the tunnel and the heat exchangers, I mean, took a little bit of time with the rivets and whatnot to do it. But uh, overall, I mean... Really, not that bad. And this thing is uh, looking cleaned up real nice, nice and shiny. All we really got to do is throw a splash of gas in her, put the coolant in it. You know, I'll run it a little bit, make sure that burps out. We don't get any overheating issues or whatnot. And then, yeah, we'll take her for a rip and uh, see how this thing goes. This one, hopefully, everything works out good. Nothing falls off when I go for a rip. Hey, well, that was a successful test ride. I made it back anyway, so that's always a good thing. But, uh, yeah, that thing works fantastic, you know. I've done my fair share of shit-talking <laughs> off-brands, you know, Polaris and Skidoo and all that. I'm more of an Articat and Yamaha guy, but uh, that's some bitch dangles. So this shootout video that we're going to be putting together, it might be pretty close. I don't know. Like, that thing pulls pretty good. Well, Scooter should be pretty happy to get that back. I mean, she's cleaned up nice like a shiny penny, and uh, he's been without her for a few years, so he's got his sweetheart back up and going, and she looks good. It works good, you know. I was When I hit the throttle, it <laughs> raised my eyebrows. She was working pretty good, so it'll be interesting to see how it does uh, when we do the shootout race, you know. I think, uh, yeah, though, you guys have been talking about these big Block 700 <laughs> Polarises, and, uh, yeah, there might be some truth to it. Uh, she hauls, but... Uh, as always, uh, thanks for tuning in, and if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. You know, it helps us out, and we're trying to grow the channel. We're enjoying doing this, and uh, hope you guys enjoy the videos, and as always, uh, take her easy.